We want to tell you about the Highlanders. Now, all of the Highlanders are part-time soldiers, and some people like to call them weekend warriors, but they like to be called soldier citizens. Back on April 1st, Len Grant started recording the story of the Calgary Highlanders. He spent almost two months on this assignment, and tonight we present his intimate look at the life of a militia regiment. It's a cool spring morning in Calgary, and a handful of people have gathered near City Hall to witness an ancient military wreck. Some people here remember war, but others have known only peace. They're all here to see a bit of history. On this Sunday morning, April the 1st, 1990, the Calgary Highlanders are going to be granted freedom of the city. It's one of the highest honors a military regiment can receive. Highlanders! Order! Arm! The tradition began centuries ago in an age of fortresses and perpetual war. In those days, an army regiment could be the best friend of a town or its worst enemy. The soldier could bring comfort or chaos. And because of that, only the most trusted regiments were allowed to pass through the gates of a city. The Calgary Highlanders have been part of our city for 80 years. Today, ancient rites will be remembered, old friendships renewed. It is my profound pleasure, on behalf of the citizens of Calgary, to confer upon you permission to exercise the right of the freedom of the city of Calgary in honor of the 80th anniversary of your regiment. The freedom of the city carries with it the gratitude of the citizens of Calgary and the traditional privileges for the regiment to parade through the streets of this city with drums beating, flags flying, and bayonets fixed. After the speeches, the soldiers act out their part of the ritual. Each motion here is a reminder of the values that dominate military life, discipline, teamwork, and tradition. And the climax of this military high mass comes with the unfurling of the regimental colors. Freeze that! These banners are sacred to the Calgary Highlanders. Here, great battles are remembered. Here, young soldiers find courage. Half hour later, and the Highlanders are back at Mawada Barracks. They're off stage now and can start to relax. For the next five days, these part time soldiers will go back to their civilian lives. One mag, one bayonet, one line six. But they won't stop being Highlanders. As members of a reserve unit, they're always on call. They could be asked to serve their country at any time. The oath itself is very short, but extremely meaningful. A military regiment has to constantly rebuild itself, and once every few weeks, that's what happens with the Highlanders. I don't know whether you're aware of it, but due to the young men in the service, in Canada, in the States, and all our allies, we have had the longest period of peace the world has ever known. In wartime, it's easy for the military to get new recruits. But in times of peace, like now, getting new blood for a military organization can be a difficult job. And especially with part-time soldiers like the Highlanders, 
The emphasis is on learning skills that will be useful in civilian life. They will learn leadership. That will ensure that they will be fully employed for the rest of their lives as long as they want to be. Anyone over 18 can join the militia, but only certain people will take the oath. Do you swear, Do you swear that I will be faithful? And I personally like the discipline myself. I like being told how many push-ups to do and stuff like that. Being told what to do basically and then earning their respect, getting getting up in ranks and then you myself being, you know, if I had rank telling other people what to do and having their respect. And bear true allegiance, bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I didn't finish school and I wanted to finish school, but Right now, I just, I don't want to go back to school. So I figured that for any good training to go through with the military. According to law, so help me God. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. And how much is patriotism, the desire to serve Canada, a part of joining the militia? The reason Jules Verkwin is joining up. I'm uh, here just to uh, have a fun time in the military. Is far different from the reason his stepfather signed well, up. It was a war when I joined up, and uh, we, uh, they locked the garbage cans in Canada, and we couldn't eat, so we <laughs> had no alternative. Well, it was the hungry 30s, you see, 1939, and things were rough, and uh, you didn't have much choice. But military men like Gabe Payne say there is a common thread. When I was a recruiting officer, about at least seven out of ten new recruits stated that they wanted to serve their country. And we had some trouble spots around the world at that time, Grenada, uh, South Africa, Namibia, and maybe since things have quieted down, people have chose another reason for joining the armed forces. But I, I truly believe that that is still in the back of their minds, the service to the country, the patriotism. What's that? This is the place where the transformation begins, where civilians become soldiers. From top to bottom. Yeah. Yeah. A bit tight on the side, though. Yeah, but you uh, gotta go a bit higher. Um, let's go special size. Forty minutes. Yep. Thirteen and a half. Just the small little ones. This is the easy part of joining the Calgary Highlanders. For Jules and other new recruits, the test of commitment will come later. What is a relief operation? Quite simply, it's an operation when a force in contact is replaced or is relieved of its responsibility by someone else. Tomorrow, you're the someone else. Easter weekend, Camp Wainwright in East Central Alberta. While everyone else is enjoying a holiday, the men and women of the Calgary Highlanders are going to work, going to war. We'll do some rehearsals in the morning so that everybody's clear on what the concept is. We'll move into the position. In the afternoon, we'll have an excellent live fire with simulated artillery, uh, lots of tracer for you. We'll eat on You're the trying to build them up so that they are going to have fun. Uh, in the militia, if a guy doesn't have fun, he doesn't come back. So uh, you have to tell him clearly what's yeah, going to happen, what he's expected to do, uh, and then build it up as it did at the end with, uh, you know, this neat stuff is going to happen, and that neat stuff is going to happen, and uh, it's a good thing you're here, uh, so that they do come out. This kind of weekend only happens once a year. Live ammunition will be used in a simulated battle. No one has to attend, and only a few dozen Highlanders show up. But those who are here want to do what soldiers do, go to battle. And to do that, they'll put up with long days and short nights. OK, breakfast is at 7 o'clock. That hole doesn't open until then. It'll be ready to go at 8 o'clock. We have so much to do and so little time that Something, something's got to give, and usually it's sleep. It's kind of neat. It's a fun job. You get money for it, too, so it's all right. Bacon or sausage? Uh, bacon. 
Money is one of the benefits of the militia. Food is another. And there's plenty for everyone. <laughs> this is family breakfast, army stuff. Mom never got syrup on a scrambled egg. So. You're used to flavor. <laughs> well, that's true. Mom never made me breakfast either, so. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize the amount of sheen your skin has when uh, from distance. Not only the color of the skin, but also the texture causes it to reflect the natural oils in the face. So, not only trying to break out the outline of your face, you know, the, the uh, skin tone, but also uh, cut down on the amount of, amount of reflection. You can see. Mm -hmm. You learn discipline, I guess. <laughs> um, you learn, you're with your friends that, that you like being with and they have the same interests <laughs> while you have. Do you like guns? Yes, I do. <laughs> it seems a little unusual for a girl. Yeah, I guess it is, but I enjoy it. This is as close as it gets to war in peacetime. It's live ammunition, but all of the shots are going one way, and special effects are used to make the battle seem more real. But not everything goes as planned in battle. And today, a grass fire forces an early end to the battle. Grass fires are a constant threat in weapons training on the dry prairies. Fighting fires is as common as fighting an unseen enemy. These soldiers will leave the range for now, but they'll be back. There's a big battle tonight. There's a lot of time to kill on one of these weekends, but even in play, the emphasis is on teamwork. This game is called Buck Buck, and the object is to see how much weight you and your buddies can hold. And always, there is food. It's basic, but it's filling. So just lob it on there and move on. Great, uh, on? Ah, no, sir, thanks. I'm on a diet. Okay, there's lots of plates here. They can all use them. You will not be fed in a cup. Eat my product. You put a big smile on. Shut up. Throughout the day and into the evening, the preparations continue for the battle at night. It will be as real as safety will allow. The highlight of the weekend. With this much live ammunition, accidents can happen. Tonight, a ricocheting bullet bent the end of this soldier's gun as he held it in his hand. What did it feel like? It scared me. The end of the battle, and a time to pick up bullet casings for reloading. It saves money. This weekend, the Calgary Highlanders will use up all of the ammunition they're allotted for the entire year. But they feel more like soldiers than they've ever felt before. Exciting. It's awesome. Did you expect as much, as much light and as much noise as that, or is that? The... No, I didn't expect the flashes to be so big and loud. Get the adrenaline going a bit. I'm really pumping. Did you actually feel like you were in the middle of a, of a battle at times there? If you have to talk yourself into it, you can. And that's what you have to do in order to get your training properly. Convince yourself it's really there, otherwise you just don't take it seriously. Was it fun? Can they? the best. <laughs> <Good. laughs> a Friday night in late April, and Mawada Armories is filled with the sound of Highland celebrations. 
On the balcony above the parade square, officers watch the show and chat with their guests. The Calgary Highlanders are famous for their enthusiastic social life, and this is the social event of the year, the 75th anniversary of the Battle of St. Julian Wood. Every Highlander knows the story by heart. It happened in an oak forest in southern Belgium on the night of April 22, 1915. The Germans had just smashed through the French line protecting the port of Calais, and a horrible new weapon, chlorine gas, was being used to spearhead the attack. Allied commanders, desperately short of men and ammunition, decided to bluff the Germans with a quick counterattack. The only soldiers available were raw reservists from Calgary and Winnipeg. Just after midnight, they charged into the enemy machine guns. Hundreds of men died. But they made it to the forest and drove out the Germans in fierce hand-to-hand -hand fighting. I would appreciate that you respect, first of all, that this is the 75th anniversary of the Battle of St. Julian Wood. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, the Commander-in-Chief. A militia regiment has two jobs in peacetime. The first is to train for battle. The second is to remember. The Battle of St. Julian Wood has been remembered at dinners like this for three quarters of a century. And over the years, the officer's dinner has become a strangely elaborate ritual, a blend of feast and fetish. As with most things military, there are rules. They may not always make sense, but they're followed to the letter. For instance, no one is allowed to leave the table until the meal is done and the speech is made. And it can be a long and uncomfortable evening for the soldier who forgets to visit the bathroom before he sits down. Another rule says that the port bottle can't touch the tablecloth. No one knows why, that's just the way it is. And then there's the snuff. It's served from a ram's head, and it's guaranteed to clear the sinuses. <laughs> The climax of the feast is the toast to glorious memories, a moment of reflection. The ritual out of the way, the partying can begin. The soldiers at this dinner have done their job. They've kept alive the glorious memory of St. Julian Wood for another year. Look up, look way up. Remember Big Jules, the guy with the size 13 and a half feet? He's been in the army for seven weeks now. It's been tough, and today it gets even tougher. Jules and the rest of the recruits are about to get a taste of chemical warfare, but first they have to overcome some basic problems. Well, you got your feet on, you got your boots on the wrong feet there, Private Ang. This one go on the other side. Well, look at the bottom. Yeah. Jesus. You're an educated man. Yes, you sir. You have a degree. Yes, sir. And you put your boots on the wrong feet. That's pretty scary stuff, Private Ang. The exercise starts with a short march. A short march is just about all most people can take in one of these outfits. Up the road is the gas hut, a little building where young soldiers come face to face with one of the most insidious weapons of war. crystal inside. When the heat temperature turns to a liquid, over the capsule breaks, it turns into a vapor. The capsules contain a potent form of tear gas. It won't cause any lasting harm, but for a while at least, it will make the soldiers very uncomfortable. It's even been sprinkled 
on the lawn outside where the recruits are getting a final briefing. You will go into the door without the mask on. Immediately coming into contact with the gas, you will go, gas, gas, gas. You will put the mask on. I would suggest you do not wear your, your uh, leather gloves in that, that uh, chamber, all right? Is there something wrong? Yes, of course. What's the matter? The gas part. Gas? Where? In the weed. In the weed? No, come on. Gas, 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 Inside the hut, each soldier must perform a series of carefully rehearsed maneuvers. One of them involves covering exposed areas of skin with decontamination powder. All right? Around the back of your neck, too. The back of your neck as well. Your hair. Get your hair. Okay, put the mask back on. That's good. That's good. Okay, okay? Jules can't quite get his mask clear. Okay. Do not touch your face. All right? Yes, what? Okay, you just stand in the wind there and let the breeze blow off your face, okay? You'll be all right in a few seconds. Nice effort, bud. First I was, uh, it was very hard. I went in there and the problem was that I forgot to decontaminate the inside of the mask. And um, from there, it, it um, Went right in through and right into my lungs. Ugh. Didn't taste too good. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> I closed my eyes automatically because it burnt. It burnt and then Warren says, are you okay? And I said, no, I got gas in my eyes. He pulled me outside. He says, okay, you got to do it again. And so I went in a second time and cleared the thing out about four more times than I was supposed to. And from there, it was excellent. Watch what you touch, watch what you touch. It's not everybody's idea of fun, but these guys seem to thrive on a challenge. It keeps you fit. Mm. Do you have fun doing it? But when they say in the advertisements, be all you can be, it's true. Like, it's great. It's the best thing you can do. Jules will be finished grade 12 in a few weeks, and he'll probably join the Army full time. If he does, he'll have to leave the Highlanders. But the regiment will find new blood among these recruits, new blood to carry on a proud tradition that has lasted 80 years. Everybody get a bang on job. Those of you who had to do a return performance, uh, better job the second time around. We just loved it too much, Ward. Okay? We loved it, Ward. We had to do it. Now you know why I see this is my chance to get some payback. Okay? You drive me nuts for the whole course. I thought you were going to give us money. Yeah. But I enjoy myself when I get to that gas chamber, boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right? Outstanding job, people. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, give yourselves all squared away. <laughs> Tomorrow, the Calgary Highlanders and the King's Own Calgary Regiment will be honored by Queen Elizabeth at McMahon Stadium. No more than 20,000 people will be there to watch and will be there to provide live television coverage. Our program starts at 2 p.m. We also have the opening of Calgary's brand new... The following is a live CBC Alberta News special.
It's a beautiful, warm, sunny day in Calgary, Alberta, and welcome to McMahon Stadium. This stadium is full of people. This is the home of the Calgary Stampeders ordinarily, but today it's the home of Southern Alberta's two militia regiments, the King's Own Calgary Regiment and the Calgary Highlanders. And it's a special day for them. They are celebrating their 80th anniversaries, and they're doing it in style here at McMahon Stadium with a royal visit. I'm Bob Nicholson. I'm Kathy Daly, and Queen Elizabeth II will be arriving here in a matter of about 20 minutes. And while we're waiting, there's someone I'd like to introduce you to. His name is Lieutenant Colonel Lynn Moffat. He is with the Calgary Highlanders, and you're going to help us figure out what some of this is. And tell me, right. welcome. Thank you very much. Well, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the Calgary Highlanders. Well, we're a militia regiment, which means that we are not full-time. We all have either jobs or we're students or university students, even some housewives, which is just great. <laughs> and uh, we just do this as a, a part-time basis. And how long have you been uh, with the Highlanders? I've been with the Highlanders since uh, 1965. Now, you have beautiful tradition associated with, with your regiment. There's also another regiment out there, the King's Own. That's right. It's the King's Own Cavalry Regiment. It is a, an armored regiment, whereas we're an infantry regiment. They are also a reserve or a part-time unit as well. They don't wear kilts. No, they wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's good to have you here. And uh, we'll be talking to you lots as we, uh, as we go throughout this afternoon. And Bob, I know there's someone else we want to talk to. That's right. In fact, there's a lot of people that we want to talk to out here today, Kathy. The stands are full. I don't think they've been this full since the opening ceremonies of the Olympic Games. 28,000 people here to see the Queen and to see this changing of the color ceremony, so rich in tradition, a great show. The crowd, as I mentioned, is a big part of this show, and Len Grant is among that crowd right now. Len, what's the mood today? Bob, I guess you'd have to say the mood is one of great anticipation. I've been here since noon and watching all the families file in. Families like the Fair family from Calgary, Robert Fair and Nancy Fair and their two kids. Tell me uh, when you first decided you'd like to see the Queen. Well, we've been following her through the newspaper and we wanted to see her when she was here, but we were unable to get tickets until last evening. Must have been quite a thrill to find out about you, the fact oh, you could was. get there. It was. You have a friend whose daughter is in the Highlanders. She's out there in the field yes, now. Yes, she is. Looks kind of hot out there, doesn't it? It is. <laughs> it's not much cooler here. No, it sure isn't. I can imagine what the temperature's like down there. Yeah. Let me talk to uh, Nancy here briefly. Nancy, I saw you uh, brought along a few cold drinks for the family today. Oh, we did. It's. I knew it'd be so hot for the children, especially. Yeah, okay. What about your mood? You look Looking forward to seeing the Queen? Yes, I am. I, I saw her once when I was very little. She was coming up the Edmonton Trail from the airport. And, of course, we haven't seen her since. So we're really excited, and the children are especially. I'm right uh, in front of a young girl named Erin, nine years old, with a whole bunch of Canadian flags in her hair. Erin, uh, tell me about your mood. What, what, what are you looking forward to here today? Um, I don't know. Have you seen the Queen before? No, I haven't. You think she's a nice lady? Yeah. Where'd you get all the flags? Well, my mom put hers in my head, then I give her mine, and my brother put his in mine, and then my, I got my dad's. <laughs> you got the Canadian flag marker wrapped up. Bob, uh, the fairs, as I say, are just one of hundreds and hundreds of families in the stands here today. Everybody's trying to keep cool because it's very, very warm, but there's a great mood of anticipation. Back to you, uh, Bob and Kathy. Thank you, Len. There on the field, you can see the pipes and drums and part of the 100-man honor guard. These troops have been on this field for more than half an hour now. Up top here, there's a cool breeze blowing, but down there, it is hot. The sun is baking off that astroturf, and Lynn Moffat, I'm sure you know that feeling of being on parade in the hot sun. It gets warm, doesn't it? It does get warm. <laughs> yes, it gets very warm, and that's one of the things that uh, we work very hard with the soldiers to, so they can recognize what we call the blackout signs, which they the body starts to tingle, and then their sight gets blurry, and then eventually they black out. And the next thing they know, they're lying down in the, in the shade with a medic taking care of them. Kissing the astroturf. That's right. <laughs> well, yes. let's hope that doesn't happen today. This celebration, of course, is the main event of Queen Elizabeth's visit to Calgary. In fact, it's the reason she came to southern Alberta. It also caps off a whole year of celebration. We mentioned this is the 80th birthday of these two militia regiments. It's been a year of special events, and we'd like to take you back to a special event that happened early in the spring, and our reporter, Len Grant, was there. It's a cool spring morning in Calgary, and a handful of people have gathered near City Hall to witness an ancient military wreck. 
Some people here remember war, but others have known only peace. They're all here to see a bit of history. On this Sunday morning, April the 1st, 1990, the Calgary Highlanders are going to be granted freedom of the city. It's one of the highest honors a military regiment can receive. The tradition began centuries ago in an age of fortresses and perpetual war. In those days, an army regiment could be the best friend of a town or its worst enemy. The soldier could bring comfort or chaos. And because of that, only the most trusted regiments were allowed to pass through the gates of a city. The Calgary Highlanders have been part of our city for 80 years. Today, ancient rights will be remembered, old friendships renewed. It is my profound pleasure on behalf of the citizens of Calgary to confer upon you permission to exercise the right of the freedom of the city of Calgary in honor of the 80th anniversary of your regiment. The freedom of the city carries with it the gratitude of the citizens of Calgary and the traditional privileges for the regiment to parade through the streets of this city with drums beating, flags flying, and bayonets fixed. After the speeches, the soldiers act out their part of the ritual. Each motion here is a reminder of the values that dominate military life, discipline, teamwork, and tradition. And the climax of this military high mass comes with the unfurling of the regimental colors. These banners are sacred to the Calgary Highlanders. Here, great battles are remembered. Here, young soldiers find courage. Half hour later, and the Highlanders are back at Mawada Barracks. They're off stage now and can start to relax. For the next five days, these part time soldiers will go back to their civilian lives. One mag. One bayonet. Sign line six. But they won't stop being Highlanders. As members of a reserve unit, they're always on call. They could be asked to serve their country at any time. And there they are. There it is, the color of the Calgary Highlanders, for the last time being paraded before the troops. That's right. It must be a sad moment, though, in a, in a way. It's a very emotional moment, yes. Because for the soldiers, this is something that, you know, they have fought and died for. The significance of the colors, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's not just a flag that you do parade in front of the troops. What is it about the color? that makes it so such an emotional thing. Well, I suppose starting from today, uh, where the soldiers are today in, in our society, to them it's a very important thing because we haven't been at war for you know, a good number of years, and to see what the regiment has done in past wars is very important for the young soldiers, and it builds within them a pride so that they too will do the same things. Yeah. 
should we ever have to go to war, to war again. Much more than a symbol, too, I suppose there are memories associated with that, the battles that were fought. Very much so. And to, just to give you an example, everyone has heard the word nuts operative, you know, when the Americans were being surrounded by the Germans. But no one was, remembers that a Canadian corporal said when they, they were completely surrounded, all of the officers had been shot. And uh, the German officer said, would you English gentlemen please surrender? And this Canadian Lance Corporal got up and said, we ain't uh, gentlemen, we ain't Englishmen, and we ain't surrendering. And it is that type of, you know, esprit de corps, that type of morale, which is all built into the colors, and it's those events that, in fact, have put, you know, the different battle honors on the colors, because it is the private soldiers, essentially, who win battles. A lot of those old soldiers are, are here today. We have seen some of them. Yes, there's a, you can, when we will be seeing the parade, you can, there's a whole bunch of, over 600 soldiers uh, that have served with either regiment that are in parade today right now. And they're part of the old guard. That includes uh, from both the King's Own Calgary Regiment and the Calgary Highlanders. Uh, some of them, in fact, you know, have served you know, between the wars. And I believe there's one or two veterans that uh, fought during the First World War. And to them, it's a very moving occasion. And they will be having their own march past before the Queen. And it'll be a very, very emotional time, both for them and certainly for, for all of us. Now, the old colors are, are, are based on the Union Jack, and the new colors are going to be based on the Canadian flag. Maybe you can tell us, here's the old color right here. Well, the old color, it's called the Queen's Color, and its purpose was uh, it goes back to the Middle Ages when they allowed people to have a Queen's Color and then their own sort of family color. And this color would indicate their allegiance to the sovereign, and the other color would indicate the allegiance to the other. This is the, this is the new color with the Canadian flag uh, on it, the new Queen's color, and this is the one that's being presented today, and this is the one that we're really excited about receiving from Her Majesty. The other things that uh, we can talk about colors is that it goes back even further in history than just to the Middle Ages. We can you know, go back, a very interesting thing is that the ancient uh, Romans, in order to make sure the soldiers would fight, We would like to welcome our viewers now on Newsworld, cable channel 26 across the country. Welcome you to McMahon Stadium and a ceremonial changing of the colors, celebrating the 80th birthdays of Calgary's two militia regiments, the King's Own Calgary Regiment, and the real guests of honor today, the Calgary Highlanders, who are being presented with new colors by the Queen. We're expecting her about six or seven minutes from now. Also, the Chief of the Defense Staff for the Canadian Forces will be here, the Lieutenant Governor of Alberta. Right now, you're looking at the old colors of the Calgary Highlanders being paraded through the ranks for the last time. They will be exchanged. New colors will be consecrated at this ceremony we'd and like presented by the Queen. Right, and we'd like to introduce a guest who is sitting with us. It's a guest of honor we have today. Lieutenant Colonel Lynn Moffat is here, a member of the Calgary Highlanders, and and it's a, it's a special moment for you to see all of this happening. It's a very special moment, also a very exciting moment, because the Queen is here. She is the Colonel-in-Chief of both regiments, and we're very excited about it. Colonel Moffat, why are they changing the colors? The reason they're changing the colors is because of the change of the flag. We now have, this is the Union Jack, which was the old Queen's color. That was acceptable when they were presented in 1973. But now, with the new flag, we have the Queen's colors with our own flag. Are there a lot of people who are sorry to see the Union Jack go and those old colors? There are some people that are certainly sorry to see it go, but they're also happy to see the new Queen's color because the flag has been very much accepted by all, of the, by all soldiers. And the new Queen's color is going to be based on the Canadian flag. That's right. 
And it's not every day that the Queen presents colors to a Canadian regiment, is it? That's right. The last time, I believe, was 1958 to the King's Own Cavalry Regiment. Maybe we can point out at, at this point that we see two flags when we just saw the old colors based on the Union Jack. There's a beautiful yellow flag that is next to it. And that is a regimental flag. The regimental flag or the regimental colors it goes back to when they, they were not sure which side they were supposed to fight for. So what they would do is they would march the color before the soldiers so they know this is where we fight. Now, as it has evolved, uh, that is usually the color of the regiment is usually the same color as the uniform or certain parts of the uniform that we wore. In this particular case, it's the buff color. And that regimental flag stays? It stays. It doesn't change. Okay. When the Queen arrives, and that will be shortly, within just a few minutes' time, there'll be a 21-gun salute. Quite soon after that, the Queen will pass the new colors on to one junior soldier, one junior officer. His name is Lieutenant Jim Hands, and Len Grant had the chance to speak to that excited young man a bit earlier today. Lieutenant Hans, you must be very, very happy today. Oh, I am, Len. I am. Certainly, it's, uh, it's quite an experience to be able to be in front of Her Majesty and certainly an honor to be presented with my regiment's new color. How were you chosen for this? Well, I was chosen on the basis of two, um, two factors. First of all, I'm the senior junior officer in the regiment and the senior lieutenant. So that was a contributing factor and also the fact that the CO thought I could do the job properly, so he picked me. Have you been practicing hard for this moment? Certainly, we began uh, practice, the officers began practice back in September, last September for uh, the parade. Uh, the knowledge of the parade possibly has been going around for about two years now. And uh, so last September we began training in earnest. What will you be doing here in accepting the colors? Uh, after, the colors after the color is consecrated by the chaplain generals and uh, the queen will come forward Grab, take the color from uh, Major Spire, correction, the DCO, Major Gable, and place it, give it to the Queen, and she will place it in the color carrier, which I carry, as I'm kneeling down in front of her. And then, uh, will you be talking with her? No, I won't say a single word to her, Len. You will then, she will walk away and you'll walk away? Uh, pretty much, Len. After that, uh, Mr. Seacon and I, the other color officer, we stand up, we march to O Canada, and uh, place the new color in amongst the regiment. How significant an occasion is this for you, uh, getting a new color for the regiment? Personally, this, is, this has to be easily the highlight of my six years within the regiment. It's a rare occasion indeed, and certainly the first time the Queen has presented the Calgary Highlanders with a color. The last color was presented, the one that's being retired, was presented by Princess Alexandria in 1967. Have you ever been this close to the Queen before? No, never. Certainly not. We were on the arrival guard, of course, the other day, but uh, she just walked by, and this time she'll be right in front of me. A little nervous? Oh, a bit, certainly, but it's uh, it's worn down with the amount of practice we've put in, I think. I think it'll go well. I think it'll be an excellent trade, Len. I hope it uh, goes smoothly for you. Thank you, Lieutenant Hans. Great, thank you. Colonel Moffat, this is uh, it's quite an honor. It is quite an honor for this young man and this long history associated with uh, with protecting the colors, being part of that color program. Well, what would happen is the colors on the battlefield, they're always the center of where the chief of the tribe or the king or the lord was and so consequently because he was there they would have the you know some of their best fighters would be there and if that ever when that moved forward then the, hopefully the line would move forward and withdrew then it meant they were in trouble and if it is ever captured it meant the battle was over very well protected very well protected so the limousine you see on your screen is the limousine of General de Chasselain, the Chief of Defense Staff of the Canadian Army. There'll be a general salute for him. That means the Queen is not far behind. The Lieutenant Governor will be next, then the Queen will arrive in the stadium. But we were talking about Lieutenant Jim Hands, who will receive the new colors from the Queen. He's a proud young man, and as you can imagine, his parents and his friends are very proud, too. Len, talk to them. We're standing now with a couple of very proud people, actually, in fact, three of them, George and Shirley Hands and Sarah Curran. George and Shirley Hands are the father and mother of Jim Hands, Lieutenant Hands, who's going to be accepting the color on behalf of the Calgary Highlanders. Sarah Curran is Jim's girlfriend. Start with you, George. You must be very, very proud today. Very proud indeed, sir. You've had some history with the Calgary Highlanders. Uh, no other than assisting my son uh, upon his uh, 
you know, entry into the uh, branch of the regiment. But I was in the 48th Highlanders myself many years ago. Now that's an Ontario division. That's correct, yes. Yeah, what, what did you say to him when your son expressed an interest in joining the Highlanders back about six years ago? I was very proud, very uh, much looking forward to his uh, enjoying it as much as I did. Shirley, your thoughts today? Oh, I'm very proud indeed. Couldn't be prouder. I'm Tell looking me. forward to this day for a long time. Tell me, Shirley, are you a royalty watcher? Well, I'm Irish. <laughs> yes, but I am. I, I like them very much. Have you yes. seen the Queen before? Not in person, just in television. Did you give your son any advice before today? Oh, no, not really. I think he knows more than I do. <laughs> How to greet her and that, so I know I didn't. Sarah Curran, now you're the girlfriend of Jim Hands. How about you? Did you give him some advice before today? No, he doesn't need any advice. No, he'll be fine. He'll be great. Has he been getting a little nervous the last few days? Um, a little bit, but everything's under control. It'll be a good parade. How about you? Are you excited about seeing the Queen today? Yeah, really excited. Really excited for him. Better, you know? yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, George. I'm um, sorry, just met the Queen. You just, just met the Queen. That's correct, yes. Yeah. What, what, what's happened there, Sarah? Tell us about that. Oh, they just had a photo session with the, the uh, soldiers there, so we got to meet her briefly afterwards. During the last so time, what did you nice. think? She's, she's a wonderful lady, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much all for talking with us right now, and Just I hope the ceremony goes well. As you may know, uh, Jim, after uh, completion of this uh, um, uh, ceremony, as such, uh, he will have to soon resign his commission because he's now going into the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. We understand that. We wish him well. Yes. We wish you well, too. Thank you very much for thank talking with us. Back to you, Bob, Kathy. In the car, the thank you, Len. The gentleman you're looking at with all the brass on his shoulder is a full general in the Canadian Army. In fact, he's the most senior officer in the Canadian forces, General John de Chastelain. He joined the Calgary Highlanders at the age of 17 as a piper, and he asked to play the pipes today in this ceremony. Of course, uh, the general just stepped out of that limousine we just saw, and Colonel Lynn Moffat, who is uh, with us now, has a bit of a history, and, uh, and it goes uh, way back. Yes, we first met in uh, 1958 at College Militaire de Saint-Jean. We were in the boxing ring, and we exchanged uh, fisticuffies for, for three rounds, <laughs> and uh, I, I ended up the winner. You won, but he's That's a general right. now. <laughs> He is a very capable man. He went on to become the cadet wing commander at the Royal Military College, and it's just been a real pleasure following his career through the armed forces. He is a true officer and a general. I believe we're looking at the Queen's car about to arrive at the stadium, and you will hear some very loud noises when the Queen arrives. That will be a 21-gun salute. And we hope to have pictures of the 20th Independent Field Battery from Lethbridge who will be firing that salute. Here comes the Queen's car. The Queen will get out of her limousine, transfer to an open vehicle, and be driven around the stadium floor. She'll go to the reviewing stand, and very shortly after that, she'll present the new colors to the Calgary Highlanders. It's just about to, there she is, transfer to an open vehicle and be driven around McMahon Stadium. There are an awful lot of people here in McMahon Stadium who have been waiting for this moment. It's a, it's a hot summer day here. You may know me. Perfect day for a royal visit. And the crowd knows she's here. You can hear the buzz behind oh. us. You can feel the shivers up and down people's backs. This is the big payoff moment, of course, for these troops on the field. They've been standing a long time, about an hour, and now finally the most exciting part, the part they've been waiting for is arriving the Queen. What it's all about. And here she comes. And the crowd. Some people getting to their feet, cheering for the Queen. Everybody's on their feet. We've been fortunate to have the Queen with us for so many days now. This is an almost unprecedented four-day visit to Southern Alberta. And a real honor for these two regiments, isn't it, Colonel Moffat? It is, and this morning, uh, all of the serving officers of the regiment, in fact, met the Queen along with their, with their wives. 
and she was the most gracious woman. She had a kind comment for everyone. These regiments mean a lot to her, don't they? Yes, all of her regiments mean a great deal to her. She is very, very fond of her regiments. And there you see some of the 28,000 people who packed into McMahon Stadium for this moment of pageantry. It's a historic moment for these soldiers on the field and a, a great moment for the people in the crowd. And she's in. You can hardly hear everyone so excited. She's just about to drive past the old guard, Colonel Moffat, those old soldiers, veterans of World Wars I and II. Yes, and they are saluting the Queen as she goes by. They are very, very proud, and even the veterans that can't walk or have crutches, they are standing proudly to attention. Events like this seem to just really bring back the old spirit. There they are, some of the old guard. And this is the moment that the Queen has a job to do here today. That's right, the presentation of her color to her, one of her regiments. She'll now be introduced to Colonel Fletcher, who commands all the, the militia district of southern Alberta. He will escort her the rest of the way through the ceremony, if I'm not mistaken. He will escort her on the platform and then turn her over to the various COs, but uh, the COs will take her from there to, through their respective regiments. And it will go first from the, to the King's Own, uh, then from the King's Own to the Calgary Highlanders. So she's meeting the commanding officer of the King's Own first, then she'll meet uh, Colonel Maitland, the commanding officer of the Calgary Highlanders. That's right. There's a reason that goes first, isn't there? That's right, because the King's Own Cavalry Regiment are an armored regiment, and it goes back to the time when cavalry units were always senior to infantry units because the cavalry units were usually equipped by lords and in the local. There's a noise for you. That's the beginning of the 21-gun salute. We'll hear 20 more of those pops. That's right. Uh, with any luck, mounted high up on McMahon Stadium, and if we can get a look at those howitzers firing, I am, I'm told that's quite a sight. Impressive. Very much so. There you see. You can hear the noise echoing off the hills around Calgary. The Queen has taken a lot of these salutes, but I wonder if the effect ever wears off. This is really something. <laughs> Look at this. Well, smile. it's no one really knows where the 21 gun salute originated. Apparently, it had something to do with naval commanders, and they each had sort of their salute. It has to be an odd number. It's just something that's traditionally now all royalty have to 20 minutes. The tradition is that even numbers are bad luck, is that right? That's right, yes. And now the Queen is going to inspect the troops, the Calgary Highlanders. Right now she is with the, King, with the commanding officer of uh, the King's Own, uh, Colonel uh, Dick MacDonald. And one of the interesting things, the Queen has spent so much time inspecting soldiers that you'll notice that she will go very, very quickly through the ranks, and some people think that that is, you know, that that is, she shouldn't be doing that. But she's had so much experience inspecting troops, she knows how tired they are, the fact that, you know, some of them could be on the borderline, and she cares very, very much about the soldiers. She usually stops and talks to one or two of each guard, and she usually picks them. They have, if they're wearing a medal, it's a little bit different, or if they're very young or very old, uh, she will stop. And just her presence, the soldiers really feel her presence, even when she's walking by. They know that she is there. It's just something that you really have to experience uh, to really understand. 
is, and she does move quite quite quickly. Already we've seen that one soldier, uh, one soldier who had to sit down. That's right, yes. It's very hot standing in those uniforms, standing there for an hour without moving. But what happens is that the blood just can't move. You're not moving, so the blood just sort of seems to, you know, doesn't yeah. go anywhere. And then, as I say, you start getting these, these tingling, and you start approaching blackout. Here we are with the King's Own Regiment now. And we've talked a bit about the, the King's Own, about the history of this tank regiment. A very different type of soldier from the Highlanders. It, the King's Own was the first Canadian regiment to adopt or to become a tank regiment in 1935. And it is a part of the regimental history. Some of the things that they, they actually put metal around vehicles to try to make tanks out of them because the Canadian Army didn't have any tanks. They also have, during the Second World War, they participated in the app. They were the armored unit that participated in the app, along with a platoon of Calgary Highlanders and the King's Own Calgary Regiment. They, of all of the Canadian units that fought overseas during the Second World War, they have the longest time of consecutive days in action of any other Canadian unit. They took some heavy losses in that Dieppe raid, but it's, although it was a bad plan, it was not a failure of the soldiers, it was a failure of planning, and they're very proud of their, their war record, and should be. Failure, it was, you're absolutely right, it was a failure on the part of the planners because the soldiers fought valiantly, and that's, you know, the soldier's job, and what does happen, and certainly the colors or the, the guidon from the King's Own Cavalry Regiment, uh, they reflect what the soldiers have done because often soldiers will give a uh, success when a general has followed up in his planning. The soldiers will see the day through because you know, the battle honors really belong to the soldiers. They're the ones who have fought to win. The They're the ones who fight and sometimes die. Now, the Queen is about to inspect the Highlanders. It's Colonel Al Maitland, who is the present commanding officer of uh, the Calgary Highlanders, and the King's Own Regiment, they have uh, 100 all ranks on parade with, I think, 10 women that are in their ranks right now. The Calgary Highlanders have 250 all ranks on parade with about 40 uh, women soldiers. And Colonel Maitland has his sword unsheathed. What is, what's the significance of that? Well, the Claymore, it's called the Claymore in the Highland regiments, and it is just a weapon which was used by officers during the latter stages of European warfare. So officers would carry it in order to protect themselves and as a sign of authority. And the Queen will be inspecting all of the troops of the Calgary Highlanders. She inspects all of the, she has inspected all the troops of the King's Own, and she will inspect all of the troops of the Calgary Highlanders, but she does not inspect the bands. So almost no one goes unnoticed. Why? Almost no one, right. <laughs> and maybe you can tell us, I mean, everyone can certainly see uh, the difference between the Highlanders and the King's Own in the uniform. Can you tell us, tell us about, about your uniform? The Highlanders uh, wear spats, the, the, the white things they have around their feet, and the story goes that it was during the uh, Napoleonic Wars when the uh, Highlanders were fighting in, in uh, Spain, and the soldiers had nothing to put on their feet, so they wrapped white sheets around them. And because of their valiant fighting, they sort of became adopted as a part of their footwear. And another, practically every item of our uniform has some history behind it. Uh, for instance, the Black Watch, who also wear spats, they have a V cut out of the toe of the spat because the British square was broken. So it can also be used to signify uh, defeat as well. You know, it's amazing. Almost every movement and every article of clothing has a rich historical significance. I read somewhere that there's a real significance to the monarch inspecting the troops up close like this, checking their eyes. You ever heard this, this theory? Yes, she's looking to see if there is boldness there, and as do all inspecting officers, because if a soldier looks boldly at you, then you know that he is on your side. A fighter, not a fighter. Runner. That's right. The Queen, you know, we talked about, you talked about, uh, about how the Queen has a soft spot for her regiments. She does this so often, but it, yet it, you, you really get a sense that this is as special as any of her inspections. Each regiment is just like a family. 
and as you know, every family is different, so each regiment is different, and you can feel it. There is a, you know, when you, the soldiers are on parade, there's almost an energy field that is there, and it just comes, and she senses this, the, because the officers are different, the NCOs are different, the soldiers themselves are different, and, you know, so it is, though it's the same, it's always new, because the people are different. Now, the Queen is, is just inspecting, I think, now the rear rank of the Highlanders' guard, and she will then return to the reviewing stand, and then the central part of the ceremony will happen. The next part it will be the, uh, the, the troops will form hollow square, and then the drums will be piled, the new flag will be placed upon that, and then the Padre General will consecrate the colors, and the Queen will present them, them to the younger subaltern. So there we see her with Colonel Maitland, the commanding officer of the Calgary Highlanders. She's finished her inspection. Crowd's applauding. The officer with the gold braid, the aiguillette, on his sleeve is her aide aid in Canada, is that right? Aide de camp in Canada, yes, that's right. And he's a Canadian officer, is he not? That's right, yes. Throughout this inspection, there's been a very good pace. This has not been a slow process. It has not been a slow process. No, she fully understands the what the soldiers are going through. And as I say, she's a very gracious, very gracious lady. And she's done this a time or two. Uh, definitely. A few. <laughs> but always special, as we can see. And so the ceremony will soon begin where the new colors will be granted. That's right. And all of this, again, is based upon all of the same thing. All of the drill that they're doing, it goes back to their battle maneuvers in centuries past. And when they form the hollow square, uh, they, in fact, are forming a protective barrier around the drums and so that the drums, the colors will be protected and the, the people who are presenting the colors will also be protected. Now, what we're looking at now is the King's Own Calgary Regiment will now mount their armored vehicles and later on in the ceremony they will do a drive past the reviewing stand. They have uh, the vehicles which they use as a part of their training. That includes the, the jeeps and, and the cougars which uh, have the capacity to fire a major caliber tank round. These armored soldiers are also carrying weapons, aren't they? It's uh, today's weapon right now. It's the Sterling submachine gun, which is a 9 millimeter weapon. The weapon systems are changing in the next year, and they'll be having what we call a C8, which is uh, an American weapon. I think the people at home can probably hear the clanking noise just it's below right us. Behind. They're jumping into their Cougar armored vehicles, and there's a lot of clanking and banging going on. These vehicles can carry 10 soldiers? The, when they're converted to infantry carrying vehicles, they can carry eight to 10 soldiers. Well, the noise you heard is exactly part of the reason why infantrymen don't like tanks around them at night. <laughs> Attracts too much attention. Uh. <laughs> Nasty kind of attention. Nasty they kind know of where attention. you are. Right. Okay. Now, I'm sincerely hoping they don't start up those diesel engines right now. No, they will wait until uh, the, the roll pass actually starts. And you will notice that uh, the all of them have their uh, antennas up, and they all have their regimental lanyard that's on the uh, regimental flag that's on the tenant. Now, we're going to be seeing very, very shortly on the field the Padre General there in in his chaplain clothing, uh, getting ready to consecrate the new color. What happens is. Uh, when the, the, the colors are consecrated so that the soldiers will only fight honorably in battle and that only, you know, the regiment will participate in honorable wars. Now, talk about the drums. Uh, you, you, talk about, you talk about the significance of protecting the drums, of protecting the colors. Why the drums? Why are they so important? The drums are the oldest military marching instrument uh, that soldiers have had. Soldiers began marching in step probably somewhere around 150 BC using drums with the Roman legions and they always would have altars before battles. So what they are doing with the drums is they're creating an altar. 
There is Lieutenant Jim Hand. Sorry to interrupt. He is the young officer who will accept the Queen's colors from the Queen. He'll kneel in front of her, won't he? Yes, he will kneel in front of her to receive the color. And this, there are several reasons for this. Uh, first of all, it makes it easy to replace the color. The second reason is that in the days long gone by when a knight or a soldier would approach uh, a lord, uh, that he would kneel before them, and by so doing, he would show that he was not going to take any offensive action, and the lord would know it was safe to, uh, for him to approach. And of course, the person who is in the kneeling position is uh, completely and totally vulnerable. Now we're coming to the heart of the ceremony. Those are the new queen's colors being draped over the altar of drums. And very soon the queen will come out, be handed the colors. After the, yes, that's right, be handed the colors, and then she will take them and uh, give them to. Please rise during the service of dedication and while well, Her Majesty. The announcer is asking the crowd to stand. Now the Chaplain General consecrates the colors. Yes, he'd be consecrating the colors. Now we've seen we've seen two chaplains there. The, the other is, is the second chaplain is the uh, chaplain of the Calgary Highlanders, and he will just simply be saying a prayer. And uh, Queen, she is just preparing to receive the colors and hand them to Lieutenant Hands. And the etchings on on the drums, Steve. These are the battle honors. For as much as men and women at all times have made for themselves signs and emblems of their allegiance to their rulers and of their duty to uphold those laws and institutions which God's providence has called them to obey, we, following this ancient and pious custom and remembering that God himself led his people to Israel by a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day, are met together before God to ask his blessing on this color, which is to represent to us our duty towards our sovereign and our country. Let us therefore pray Almighty God of his mercy to grant that it may never be unfurled save in the cause of justice and righteousness, and that he may make it to be to those who follow it a sign of his presence in all dangers and distresses, and so increase their faith in him, who is King of kings and Lord of lords. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance. And thou dost dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee so to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth, thy servant, our queen and governor, that in all her thoughts, words, and works, she may ever seek thy honor and glory and study to preserve thy people committed to her charge in health, peace, and godliness. O Lord, our O Lord, our God, who from thy throne beholdest all the kingdoms of the earth, have regard unto our land, that it may continue to be a place and a people who serve thee to the end of time. Guide the governments of our great commonwealth and grant that all who live beneath our flag may work for the good of others according to the example of him who died in the service of mankind, that son, thy son, our savior, Jesus Christ. Considère, Seigneur, ta générosité envers nous plutôt que nos propres mérites. Et de même que tu nous as appelés à ton service, rends-nous également dignes de cette vocation. Par Jésus-Christ, ton Fils, notre Seigneur. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
we do consecrate and set apart this color, that it may be a sign of our duty towards our Queen and our country in the sight of God. Amen. O Lord, who rulest over all things, accept, we beseech thee, our service this day. Bless what we have blessed in thy name. Let thy gracious favor rest upon those who shall follow the color now about to be committed to their trust. Give them courage, and may their courage ever rest on their sure confidence in thee. May they show self-control in the hour of success patience in the time of adversity, and may their honor lie in seeking the honor and glory of thy great name. Guide the counsels of those who shall lead them and sustain them by thy help in the time of need. Grant that they may all so faithfully serve thee in this life that they fail not finally to obtain entrance into thy heavenly kingdom through the merits of thy blessed Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God, who has called you to this service, enable you to fulfill it. Que Dieu le Père vous accorde la force de, et la sérénité que procure l'assurance de son amour. Que son Fils, Jésus-Christ, vous communique le courage de sa délicatesse Que l'Esprit Saint vous inspire la modération qui est le fruit de la sagesse. And may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen. Amen. On the 1st of April, 1910, Colonel Armstrong and his recruits toasted the official recognition of the 103rd Regiment Calgary Rifles. Thus, with the formation of the 103rd, the King's Own Calgary Regiment and the Calgary Highlanders were born. Not every regiment can establish its beginnings with such precision. Four years later, Thousands of Calgarians cheered the volunteers from the 103rd as they left the city on the 22nd of August 1914 on their way to serve in the First World War. They became a part of the numbered battalions of Canada in the Great War, and today the 50th Battalion is perpetuated in the King's Own Calgary Regiment and the 10th Battalion in the Calgary Highlanders. A small but valiant band of those who served in those battalions in Flanders fields are here today. We salute them and their comrades, gallant Canadians all. In 1939, many of the members of the regiments here today paraded to honor my father and mother on the occasion of their visit to Canada. 
Just months later, the call to serve again was heard in Calgary, as in all of Canada. A great many more of you who are here today responded to that call. The memory of your contribution to the cause of freedom will not dim with time. Forty-five years have passed since the victory celebrations of 1945. All of you participating in the parade today and in the dedication of this new color are taking part in another significant event in your regimental history. The chain of history that links the past and the present is remarkably strong here today and will be well illustrated in the Museum of the Regiments, which I was happy to open this morning. You young men and women of the King's Own Calgary Regiment and the Calgary Highlanders will, I know, be proud inheritors of the honors and traditions of your regiment. I share your pride in being part of two such distinguished Canadian militia regiments. On every Canadian there falls the obligation of citizenship. There is no better or higher expression of citizenship than service in the armed forces. As members of the King's Own Calgary Regiment or Calgary Highlanders, you discharge that obligation with great distinction. Your Majesty, Your Honor, the Lieutenant Governor of Alberta, honored and distinguished guests, citizens of Calgary, and especially our veterans here today. For the past 80 years, the King's Own Calgary Regiment and the Calgary Highlanders have served our country in peacetime and in war and on United Nations missions. Your Majesty, we will continue to emphasize the characteristics to better serve you and our great nation, those characteristics being vitality, the loyalty, and determination to do our very best in meeting our end. Today, during our Canada Day weekend, we are greatly privileged, Your Majesty, to be visited by you, our Colonel-in-Chief. We thank you for this great honor and for this occasion to recommit ourselves to serving our sovereign and our country. On accepting our new Queen's color, the Calgary Highlanders, we reaffirm our dedication to the traditions and high values that this Queen's color represents. We reaffirm our allegiance to you, our sovereign, and we pledge to hold our colors proudly and without dishonor. Long live the Queen, long live the Queen of Canada. You've just heard the Queen address the Highlanders and a reply by Colonel Al Maitland, the commanding officer of the Highlanders. Our ceremony here at McMahon is very nearly over. I guess, Colonel Moffat, uh, there was some question as to whether the Queen would address the regiments or not. Well, there was no doubt in my mind that, you know, I knew she was going to speak to her soldiers because she always talks to the soldiers. So I knew she was going to speak to the soldiers. I'd have been very surprised had she not. We'll now see a march past. The new colors will be marched past the line. Yes, they march past in slow time first and then in quick time. And as I said before, this is all these are all ancient battle drills that they would do on the battlefield. The reason for the slow march is in order for them to keep dressing so that they could fire their weapons more accurately when they got closer to the enemy. If you just joined us, we've been watching a ceremony drenched in tradition, the best traditions of the British military institutions. 
where the Queen has presented new colors to the Calgary Highlanders Militia Regiment. Some people might be wondering what happens to the old colors at this point. They were marched off a little while ago before the Queen arrived. What happens to all old colors is they're at a special ceremony. They are marched by the regiment to a church that that regiment usually attends. And the colors are hung in that church. They're then in that church for safekeeping because they are, they've been consecrated and they are you know, consequently both very, very sacred to all, all units. So they end up in the church. Now these drummers will now pick up their drums, disassemble that altar, and move back in, pre in preparation for the march past. Now, there are etchings on, on those drums that people might be wondering about. Um, again, steeped in history, these drums have a lot of significance. On all of the drums uh, are recorded the battle honors which they have received throughout their history. And in most cases, because there are only, there's only a certain amount of space on a regimental colors, usually all of the battle honors that that regiment has won are on the bass drum. And only a couple on the regimental flag. There's 20 on the regimental flag right now. That's a lot. It's a lot of, it's a lot of battles. These are units with proud military histories in two wars. And it, in the Korean conflict, there were also some members who, in fact, had served with each regiment and joined with the regiments to serve in the units that were fighting the Korean War. So we do have Korean veteran servants as well. Now, the Calgary Highlanders will very soon be marching past. You just heard O Canada played by the massed military bands, some Princess Patricia's and some King's Own Calgary Regiment uh, bands. Yeah, Both units have been amalgamated uh, their bands for, for this. Uh, it's much easier to amalgamate a reserve brass band, uh, you know, with the regular force band than it is with the pipes because of the difference in cadence. But there will be a time when all three bands, in fact, are playing together, and that will really be very, very loud. <laughs> <laughs> person that you're seeing out in the front is uh, the drum major, and he is the person who indicates where the band will go, what, when they're going to change their beat, what pattern the band is going to take, what formation, when they're going to change direction. And he is usually a master drummer as well as a uh, very sharp marcher. This is very scientific when you say the slow march, 60 paces a minute or should be. That's right. Why is that? Well, it's found that that was been the, the cadence that soldiers could maintain for the uh, greatest length of time. Uh, on the battlefield. And you'll also notice, if you look at the pipers, you can see that uh, each of the pipers are carrying a pennant on the pipe. And the pennants are, have been presented by uh, different uh, commanding officers. And General de Chastelain, as we mentioned before, is uh, also playing with the pipes and drums uh, today. And the unit presented him with his own pipe banner, which he's going to be taking back to Otto when he returns back. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I bet he'd be proud of that. 
he's very proud of his association with the Highlanders, and of course we're very proud uh, of his, you know, the fact that he is where he's at. The man in the center of your picture is the commanding officer of the Highlanders, Lieutenant Colonel Al Maitland. The slow march is uh, very, very difficult to perform, and certainly for Highland regiments, the march is either going to be excellent or otherwise. And from what I've seen right now, it looks like it's excellent. It's so easy to see all of the mistakes because of the white spats. And uh, there's just absolutely nothing like the Highland Regiment on parade. You just can't beat it. It's, it's the best uh, uniform there is. That's yeah, the greatest uniform there is. <laughs> that marching is good. This is hard work, too. This, this didn't happen over here. That's right. Well, the training has been, the soldiers have been training for about, some of them for a month uh, full time. Others have been training on weekends since the start of January because we just didn't, there just wasn't time within the unit to find additional training space. And most of us have full time jobs or are attending learning institutions full time. This is an astonishingly good job given the short amount of time they had to prepare for this. And I'm sure Her Majesty appreciates exactly the effort that went into this. So this is what the reserves can do. We are part-timers, but given the resources and allowing us to train ourselves, which we're doing, we can do the job. You see the sweat on those faces? I was just going to say, shining. And the sunburns. You mustn't forget the sunburns. There's some red noses out there. The CEO's wife was busy with sunburn motion today as the officers were getting off the bus making sure that, you know, because they got some really bad burns when they were yesterday. They must be baking the hot down on that AstroTurf. It's, it's a hot uniform and the AstroTurf, certainly the heat just oozes from the, the ground. There's the new Queen's color. It's beautiful, isn't it? There's a close-up. No, I, I'm sure this is a flag that no one will have problem having allegiance to. As much as you Certainly not us. We're, we're Canadians and that's our flag. And we're very proud of our, you know, of our Highland tradition. Because though we do wear the affiliate, our affiliated regiment tartan, we also wear our own, many of our own Canadian uniforms. Like the brown that we're wearing, thank goodness we're back to it. But that is you know, very Canadian. What was it before? Well, when the armies were Heliorized in the late 60s, we went to that green, and then now we've changed back to this. And it's really good to be brown again. Mind you, they didn't take our kilts away, we didn't dare. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Moffat, what do you call that the check cap that the Highlanders wear? We call it a Glengarry, and the Glengarry was a civilian dress about the 1700s that the civilians would wear. So the English were a bit slow in bringing the Highlanders into the army because they were such good fighters and they were afraid there might be sort of a rebellion. But when they finally allowed them to do that, it just sort of gradually became adopted in as a sort of an easy headgear to wear. Very distinctive, very good looking. Very hot, it's wool. <laughs> I'm looking at yours right now. I mean, it, it has to be hot. <laughs> Well, you notice that uh, all of the serving soldiers and officers have what's called the diced Glengarry with the uh, red and white squares. If you look at the pipers, you see the pipers do not wear the diced Glengarry. They wear the, just a straight, ordinary Glengarry. And again, that's I mean, just part of the traditions that we should have. The first guard to go by is what we call, you know, this is the most important guard. It is the color guard. And the reason that the color guard, the first guard, on, is the most important is because it is the right of the line. And this goes back to the ancient battles when they were, you know, fighting with swords. And the shield is on the left arm, which would mean they would have to, the right side would be exposed. So they would always have the very best fighters on the right flank. And that's where the, the idea of the escort to the colors then has come about because they were the best fighters and they were the ones, wherever the colors would go in the battlefield, they would have to escort it there. So that's sort of a tradition as to where the, the escort to the colors came from and its composition. 
And that's also the reason why the inspection by the Queen or any other dignitary always starts at the right of the line, with the best soldiers. With the best soldiers. Now, we've seen them march past in slow time. Will they come by again in quick time? They repeat exactly the same process in quick time. And it's a little bit easier because it's not you have to worry about keeping your balance. When you're marching in slow time, sometimes you sort of zig when you should have zagged and you get a bad step in and the white spat looks out of place. Especially when you've been standing in the heat for two and a half hours not moving to suddenly go must be a tough thing to do. It's hard to get the muscles working again. <laughs> <laughs> and yet they've certainly done that. If you just joined us, we have been watching the Queen present new colors to the Calgary Highlanders Militia Regiment here at Man Stadium on a beautiful Sunday. Day. And you're... I'm Bob Nicholson. I'm Kathy Daly, and this is Lieutenant Colonel Lynn Moffat of the Calgary Highlanders. And now we'll see the Highlanders march past the Queen's reviewing stand in quick time. What they just performed is actually a lot harder than it looks. They didn't so well that it looked quite easy, but that is moving with slow time and then without any halt, just the very next step going into a quick time march. It's hard enough to stay next to the man you're supposed to stay next to That's exactly right. behind the man in front when you're marching like this, let alone slowly putting one foot in front of the other. That's right. They're looking good. I know, and you're happy about this, aren't you? I sure am. You, you yes. were watching them. You've been involved in helping them get prepared for this. Yes, that was one of the tasks that uh, Colonel Nathan gave me, was to sort of oversee the parade and make sure that they were doing everything they really should have been doing. And even though you're up here, you still do My heart is down there. Oh, I know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's right over there with the old guy. That's where I should be. Well, we're glad to have you up here with us. Your knowledge is indispensable. And I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who have no idea just, just what this all means to you and other great Canadians. There's some, some proud young men and women executing those movements. This is an eyes right, is that right, now? That's right. And again, it's just a sign of respect, which, uh, and you can see that they're dipping the flags as well. This is the only time that the flags are dipped is uh, when there is, you know, royal the present, uh, or when there is, you know, a senior rank on, on the student guys. The red and white flag is the new colors that the Queen presented today, and the flag on the left is the regimental colors, the one that are battle on as are invasion. The regimental colors do not change. The only time they will change is should, unfortunately, we ever be forced to go to war again, and if the soldiers at that particular era fight in a battle that the military deems to a greater precedent than some of the battles that are on the present uh, colors, then yes, the colors at that time would be changed, and the new battle on would be put on it. But uh, certainly for the Calgary Highlanders, there are uh, two battles that will never change, battle on will never change, and that is uh, St. Julian Wood, and the other one is Rolf and Canal. Uh, when the camera moves back, you notice that the soldiers are all wearing an oak leaf, and the oak leaf is, was presented as an award uh, because of what the Canadians did at St. Julian Wood when uh, they filled the gap during the first gas attack. In World War I. In World War I. They had no gas masks, and yet they were still able to listen to the Everything was thrown at them. And they had, to, they had to use their imaginations and their wits and their... Yes, they had to urinate in their wool socks, and they held them over their faces, and that seemed to cut out some of the chlorine. But even uh, as it was, I think there was something like 150 uh, soldiers from the 10th Battalion actually survived, survived that particular uh, session. I guess if it's hot under a Glengarry, it must be incredibly hot under a Bearskin. It sure is. In actual fact, those are feather bonnets, not, not bearskins. Oh, it's feathers. Feather bonnets, yes. They're actually quite hollow. It's not, they're not hot like the bearskin. What's the significance of, of the, the feather bonnets? Well, this goes back to the Scottish lords or lairds and the pipers. Each one had sort of had his own piper, and the lords were so allowed to wear three feathers. There, you know, the other people underneath them were allowed to, and 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 one. And of course, the, the feather of the piper was always the same as the feather of the lord. 
because each, you know, Lord had his own, his own piper. And these drummers' uniforms are so distinctive and so different with the red coats and the, the epaulettes. It goes back again to the British red uniform. Uh, the green doublet was one which is adopted primarily for the, uh, you know, for the soldiers, and because the pipers uh, go to, right to battle with the soldiers, uh, the, the, that's one of the reasons why uh, throughout two world wars, no one is really like opposing a Highland regiment. Probably, you know, because not only were they good fighters, but the enemy also didn't like the music. <laughs> we so, like it in Canada, though. We love it in Canada. And start up your engines. The Cougars are right behind our makeshift studio here. And they're starting up too. We're starting the roll pass now, and this is the chance now for the King's Own Calgary Regiment to show their respect, their allegiance uh, for the Queen. And they will be using the vehicles which we in fact, which they in fact used to, to train with. Watch, watch the Cougars as they go by the Queen and watch the turrets. It's, it's sort of an amazing salute that they make. It is a traditional salute, whereas with the infantry officers or ground soldiers when they're marching, they salute with a sword. If they have a gun which is mounted in a turret, then they do exactly the same type of salute, uh, not with the gun as if they were using it, sort of like a sword. And they, in fact, they'll swing the turret around so that the uh, barrel is the direction of the receiving of the, uh, the queen, and then they will dip the barrel as a uh, you know, sign of respect. Respect, and, and also it has even more significance, as almost everything does, that it can't be fired. It can't be fired. This is a difficult thing as well uh, to coordinate. In fact, the Cougars have to approach the AstroTurf here at McMahon Stadium with uh, a lot of caution. We had uh, some difficulty in getting all of these vehicles in here because if the vehicle is turned on the AstroTurf, then it will tear up the AstroTurf. And we won't, might not have any football for a while, and if you're a football fan, that's not good. So uh, they managed to get it sorted out. As long as the vehicles hit the turf at a 90 degree angle and exit the turf at a 90 degree angle, we're able to have the salute that we should for Her Majesty. We can hear the crowd clapping in time with the drum. They're getting into this heat and all. It's a wonderful day for about 28,000 people at McMahon Stadium. They've watched a ceremony that's rich in history and pageantry and color and precision. A great show put on by these two militia regiments. For whatever reason, we're really proud of them. It's a great day for, not just for the regiments, but for Calgary as well. We're so proud to have been able to put on a performance like this, especially with the Queen being here. It's just something that will never happen again, probably in the lifetime of uh, all of those young people out there. Here and here they over. come. Here come those cougars Kathy was talking about. And right. they hit that AstroTurf at a 90 degree angle because nothing's tearing up down there. That's right. Not a, not a rip. Not a rip. The Stampeders have just, uh, you know, the people that run the stadium here have just been fantastic in their support of us. They have done everything that they possibly could to help us train and prepare for the, uh, the parade. And I'd have to say that on behalf of the CBC, too, just getting our equipment here, they've been super in every way, incredibly cooperative. Now, notice the turret. You see it, how it dipped down? It'll come down every time the cougar comes past the queen. So amazing. I, I think it's because it's not human. And, and, yet, <laughs> and yet you still see respect coming from this great big tank. Well, actually, it, it's the uh, commander, the tank commander, just simply giving commands to the person who's at the switch. That's right. <laughs> he just pushes a button. I know happens. that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, Colonel, what happens? They come around and they, and they form up behind the Highlanders in line? That's right. And then uh, what will happen after that, as a matter of fact, what's happening right now is the old guard is falling out. And uh, the old guard there is... It is. then march past the queen. The queen will then go and visit the old guard. And when she returns to die, it's the very last thing that these both units will do is what's called the dancing review order. 
And they're preparing for that now. And that's what the crowd is applauding. One of the biggest cheers of the day for those old veterans, the old guy, the Blazers, and Glen Gary caps with their decorations on their chests. Yeah, and then the tankers cap with the King's Own Calgary Regiment cap badge on it. These are the, these are the people who fought in, in the wars. These are the people that earned us the survivors. You know, it's just great for the last night we were at the, the 80th uh, celebration with a lot of these old vets, and some of them are in wheelchairs, you know, some of them are in canes, but they're just as proud as can be, you know, they're soldiers all, just, just look at them, you know. They're just decorations on that chest. You know? And Queen will have an opportunity to perhaps speak to some of these veterans. Uh, schedule is very, very tight. It's very tight. She probably won't because I believe she has to be in, in very shortly. But there's a there's a veteran in a wheelchair, and that's just... Yeah, these are the people that, uh, you know, given us the battle orders. Uh, the old guard is just forming up now, and they'll soon march past the Queen's reviewing staff. There's a big parade down there. Now, I've seen on several occasions on this royal visit where if the queen decides to do something, she is prepared to depart from her rigid schedule. It happened in Red Deer, and it may happen again today at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. If she decides she wants to talk to some of those veterans, she'll do it. They'll hold the plane, I'm sure. They I'm sure will. Yes. They'll drive faster to get there. She doesn't have to worry about traffic. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> when the queen is on the road, nobody else is. <laughs> Oh, this is a proud moment. And here's the march past. And I believe the, uh, I'm not sure who the, if General Wagg made it or not, but I know that General Stan Waters is the uh, commander for the old guard, and I know that uh, General Howard is the overall parade commander for the old guard. There's Stan Waters. Canada's newest senator and only elected senator. And then I'm not sure if it's General Wegg or uh, if it's, I'm not sure if he arrived, or if it's Colonel Paul Hughes, who is the commander for the Calgary Hounders. That's, okay, Colonel, that's, that's Colonel Hughes. Colonel no, Hughes. No, it's not Colonel Hughes. Not him. It's uh, General Howard. And General Howard is uh, the Honorary Colonel of the Armored Regiments uh, of Canada. And that black beret is a tanker's uh, beret. Okay, now the old guard, they presented arms, and now the old guard is going to march past. It's going to be some march past because they're still trying to, there's just not enough space for them. They're already, what, 10 deep? They're almost at the reviewing stand and still at and the far still, end. And they're still... Uh, still forming up. Still forming up. And it's very important, too, for, you know, for these veterans. As you say, it's just amazing. You know, they get back, and they, they, you, just, you just sense it. You can just feel it there. That they, 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 they talk different. And, and, you know, it's just the sharing and the comradeship that is there, which is so beautiful, because certainly, you know, from the veterans, uh, when you share an experience where you have, you know, felt a tremendous amount of fear, and you know, there's the old guy. But, They can still march. And of course, the people here certainly have warm. Look them. at that, they're all in step. Now yeah, there's a lot of truth in saying that old soldiers never die, they just simply fade away. Those decorations on their chests can attest to the sacrifice, the personal sacrifice that so many of them made in the defense of their country in two world wars and, as you said, in Korea. These are the men and women who made, made history and gave Canada what it is today. Fought and won the battles that are now on, on the wonderful 
flags that you've seen that represent the Calgary Highlanders. Calgary King Zone. Here's the Highlanders. Aren't they great? Soldiers on. Clapping in time with the beat of the drum. I know this will mean a lot to Her Majesty. I think it's, if it's fair to read into the expression on her face. And to the old guard as well, because they're, you know, to them, it's very, very important for them to be a part of this parade because they're celebrating their battle on Missouri. These are people who, after the wars, after their service, have moved into the mainstream of life in Calgary, and many of them are from they're, all walks. They're from, they're, that's right, and they're not just from Calgary, they're from, you know, right across Canada. Uh, people have come to attend this very important uh, celebration, the 80th anniversary plus the tripping and presentation of colors. Of course, many of the people in the crowd are related to the people on the field, and so none of the significance is lost on them. That's why the loud applause. Well, I, I don't know. As a, as a school teacher, I got to tell you that the tickets were going like mad. Everyone was after me. You know, can we get a ticket? Can we get a ticket? And the actual fact that there's, there were certainly a lot of seats that were set aside for us. But I would say that the vast majority of people here, are, you know, because once we sort of got our group in there, um, the vast majority of the people that have never attended something like this before. And, you know, who really wanted to see the Queen and uh, see what this is all about. Well, this is, as you mentioned, a one-of-a-kind occasion. We'll, we'll probably never see this again in, in, in our lifetime in Calgary. Calgarians knew it, too. The tickets, of course, weren't purchased, but, but you had to order them. You had to pick them up, just as you would any other event, and they were gone. They, they sure were. were. Very, very quickly. Yes. And no one here is disappointed. It's been a warm, sunny day in Calgary. People came to the stadium today with their umbrellas, not for any sign of rain, but to shelter themselves from the beaming hot sun. They were the smart it, it, ones. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part of all is that that rain we had this morning, it scared everyone off, just cooled everything nicely. It's, uh, it's you know, though it's hot, it's not blistering hot like it was yesterday. It was, very hot and period yesterday. I'll tell you what, that rain sure scared me when I looked out my window. <laughs> this morning I thought, <laughs> well, they're going to have to strap us down and, and let's hope it doesn't rain on the parade, literally. Okay, this is the front row. This is the advance and review order. This is the final formal presentation. The Royal Salute. It looks like Her Majesty may be walking over to at least 
maybe talk to some of the old guard. I don't see her repair. It's air still at the far end. Uh, the queen is just walking off to the reviewing stand, and with any luck, she'll get to talk to some of the old guard. She's accompanied by Colonel John Fletcher, militia commander for Southern Alberta. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, she was scheduled originally to leave it. And so we're already behind schedule. <laughs> what else is new? What else is new? It's been that way by what, 10, 15 minutes yes. for the last three days. Which is fine with the crowd here. You bet. That's right. And she is making her way to the old guard. To the old guard. Now, let's see if she'll get a chance. Yes, it looks like she's oh, slowing down. Nice. Shaking hands with Generals Waters and Howard. General and Senator Waters. General, that's right, General and Senator Waters. <laughs> I can't help but get a sense of relaxation from Her Majesty. No, it's just, it, she has such a, you know, it's really hard to describe, but she has such a beautiful presence. Uh, and, you know, you can see her, you know, her, her regalness, but yet you're not afraid, you know. And the soldier sense this. And does she still look for boldness in these eyes? Well, she's seen it. There, this is a wonderful moment. Isn't it? And you know, it probably means just as much to her as it does to the soldiers, because uh, after all, we were pretty safe here, and uh, we certainly you know, helped them um, during two world wars when things were pretty sticky over there. And she appreciates that. She knows that. She was a little bit young, but she caught the very tail end of World War II. She was in the, the uh, British Army Auxiliary in 45 and 46. And also, she had a son serving in the Falcon War. Right. Uh, so, you know, she knows what it's like to be a mother and to have a son out where there's the possibility of, you know, losing a life. You're watching Queen Elizabeth chatting and meeting and inspecting members of the Old Guard, veterans of the Highlanders and the King's Own Calgary Regiment, who are here today to watch her present new colors to the Highlanders. Isn't it wonderful how she's, you know, stopping and uh, talking to all of the, the old soldiers? This marks the end of the Queen's visit to southern Alberta. It's been a whirlwind four days, a very eventful four days. Very shortly, she'll get into her limousine and be driven to the airport. On her way to Ottawa for Canada Day celebrations there. And, of course, that will be live right here on the CBC Network and CBC News World. But what she will leave behind, certainly, is uh, I know two regiments that uh, will be carrying this experience, which they have received today. You know, they'll, they'll have it put with them for the rest of their lives. It's, uh, it's something that's always with you. And I guess that's what makes the old guard keep on coming back. It's all of these old memories uh, that, uh, you know, that are there. Uh, you remember this, you remember that. And it's just it's just a wonderful, rich experience. And this is a very emotional moment that we're seeing now. The Queen is meeting and talking to members of the former serving soldiers with the Highlanders. And I believe that she's talking to, that's uh, uh, Mark Tennant. Uh, and he, has, he was wounded several times during the uh, Second World War. He served with the Calgary Highlanders. And it's always fun going through an airport uh, you know, the detectors, the detectors, detector. because he's got so much shrapnel in his, in his body. And the first time, he was the honorary lieutenant colonel of the regiment, and I was the CO, and the first time he went through, you know, I went through, and, and he just lit the thing up, and there were security guards rushing all over the place. And he was very patient, because it had happened before, and, you know, they kept on buzzing, and then they would feel, he said, well, that's shrapnel. He said, there's shrapnel in there. <laughs> You know, just these young security guys, it was, you know, he was fully prepared because he'd experienced it so many times before, but, and that's, that's the type of people that both regiments have. 
He'd probably have to explain what shrapnel is, shards of metal from exploded <laughs> shells that have penetrated his body and are still there. That's really good. It hurts going in. And coming out, too. Oh, bad. Have <laughs> you ever had that happen to you? Uh, no, not, uh, not from shrapnel. And, and, and Her Majesty is having some, some very nice conversations. She is, she's with... having a very good time. You can see it. She's enjoying herself. It, she's not about to be hurried out of this stadium. No. She's going to make the most of this moment, and it means a lot to her and to these veterans. And the thing is that you know, she feels so safe here because you know, we are loyal to Canada. There's, you know, this is part of the whole thing. There's no politics here. She doesn't she have to worry about anything like that. This is just... Just being a soldier is part of a family, and we're, you know, we are, you know, part of her family. And that's, it makes, to her, you get, you know, such a beautiful thing for her to be able to just relax and be yourself. And you heard that sentiment expressed in, in Colonel Maitland's reply to the Queen, where he dedicated the regiment, rededicated it to her service. And to Canada. And to Canada. And to Canada. Yeah. And look at all of all the medals, that's you know, something that you just don't see in soldiers today. Uh, the only medals that we have now, either for long service or there are an increasing number of reserve uh, soldiers and officers who are now you know, serving with the peacekeeping forces abroad. And this has been you know, a tremendous benefit as far as recruiting and training our soldiers and actually giving them a mission, because we really don't have a very clear mission in the reserves. But they're trying to address that now, and that should help us in, in the future. Well, this Queen's visit was kind of a boon to the militia regiments here because it, it opened up some recruiting, didn't it? It was, and, you know, what is interesting, if you look at it from another perspective, is that we really wonder, where are today's young people, you know? Uh, would they be interested in something like this? And the answer is obviously yes, because the recruiting that we have done, you know, in the past six months has been phenomenal. And they put up with all of it. They put up with being yelled at, being screamed at, uh, and, you know, having to press their own trousers when they were wearing trousers, having to clean their own boots, and doing, you know, doing drilling again and again and again. We've got fine young people in this nation, and people who think that, you know, we're, we don't respond I don't think they're really taking a, you know, a good reading. That's the proof out there, because they're all young soldiers. Well, the Queen said it herself, there is no higher expression of citizenship than serving your country and its armed forces. And I'm, I'm told the Queen has about two or three more minutes before she, she has to leave. They'll be driving those vehicles quickly as it is. They have everything <laughs> timed. They have everything timed, as I you know. know. I know. Uh, but uh, the people at home probably don't realize that they've timed, they've timed the departure time and what speed they would have to go to to arrive at the airport on time if they're five minutes late or ten minutes late. Everything's been factored in. They know exactly where to put that pedal That's when right. they get in their car. They've even measured the distance <laughs> from where her car leaves to the plane, to the meter. To the meter. 2.5. She's just finished passing through the last ranks of the old guard now, and I believe she's sitting towards her limousine. Yeah. Oh, and it's, it's uh, going to be a bit sad for us because uh, Calvary's saying goodbye to the Queen after, after being with her for four days. Now the crowd is saying goodbye to the Queen. Let's see if she turns around and waves. Into the Cadillac. She's off to the airport. It's been a great day, hasn't it been? A great Absolutely. parade. Queen Elizabeth off on her exactly measured ride to the Calgary International Airport, where she will board a Canadian Forces jet and fly to Ottawa. I'm not sure if they will catch the tail end of the last march out, but it's interesting. The Highlanders have an interesting tradition, and that is the, the black bear is the blade of a pipe tube, and there are certain stanzas in which they hit a loud yell. And I, as I say, I'm not sure if the program is going to finish, we're going to see it, but it's something that is part of our, you know, part of our heritage, and we hope the whole crowd will uh, 
Oh, so we had to sing along with us as it were. Yell along. <laughs> yell along with us, yes. Some people are starting to leave the stands, but there's still a good few left. And we'll see is, the regiments march on. And this is when it's all about the Queen's color. And the Queen presented the Calgary Highlanders with their new Queen's color. Great day. It's been a long, a hot day for these. It's been a long, Men, hot women. series of days uh, <laughs> uh, for them. And I know that Colonel Maitland uh, was talking to him uh, this morning, and his throat is pretty sore because there's that's a lot of yelling to uh, do in a very short period of time. And there he is. for a solid week now. Yeah. You can that see must be why. good for his throat. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know why he has the sore throat, though. Yes. And, uh, and this some is now look the final sober. departure now of the King's Own Calgary Regiment in their... Some of the senior officers still on the reviewing stand will take the salute as the regiments march past. General DeShastling was going to take the salute, but he said he was going to stay with the pipe band. He wanted to stay with the he pipe band. He wanted to stay with the pipe band. <laughs> this is what you'd call your mechanized roll pass. Yes. <laughs> As you explained earlier, the, the King's Own Calgary Regiment precedes the Highlanders out because as an armored regiment, they take precedence over the poor infantry. That's right, they're senior to us. Uh, well, all armored regiments are senior to all infantry regiments. That's the rule of thumb. There's a couple of exceptions, and we don't worry about those. And you tell us why. I, I know this goes back a long, long way, too. Well, it goes back to uh, the fact that uh, any person could be sort of an infantryman. All they had to have was a club or a, eventually a sword or a spear, whereas it required quite a bit of money to be able to you know, feed and support a horse. So, and, and then, when you get into the Middle Ages, when we have the knights or the armor, you know, you cost out uh, what a, you know, just to, what a knight would wear, if you put that in today's dollars, it's almost the same cost as a million dollar tank, when you, really, when you really look at it. So you had to be pretty wealthy to to do that, so that's why they're the right of mind, because it was a nobility that were the uh, riding the horses. Money talks. <laughs> the infantry walks. <laughs> <laughs> You can hear the noise of the cougars heading up their stations again and going back for another roll past. And that looks a lot harder than, or that is a lot harder than it looks. You can see that with the uh, King's own crew commander and uh, the 